it's going to activate the solenoid. And then below 7.7 .7 PSI, we're going to be finding that the boost solenoid is at 100% duty cycle. It's opened all the way. It's trying to flow the maximum amount of pressure to the top of the wastegate to push the valve down, to spin the turbo faster, to get into boost faster. So this quick spool feature is something that we want to always use whenever possible, but I made the mistake when I began doing this. I should have zeroed this out. I left it on. It didn't affect anything, but it can when you begin to try to dial in your boost control. So normally you would zero this out, but for this example and the baseline pulls and, and what I'm going to be doing in this video, I'm going to be leaving this at 7.7 .7 where I started. So we've flashed this. We want to do our dyno pull, and what we're going to be seeing here if we go into graph we're going to be looking here at data log. Let's load up our first dyno pool after we've made those changes. We're going to be seeing here in our boost template. And this is a template we've already set up in the previous data log videos. We see all our templates here under boost tuning. We're only going to be focusing on the boost tuning data logs in this video. We're not going to go through the other tuning process of walking through the fuel and ignition timing. I want to be very specific when I look at these uh, data log videos so you can follow along and really pinpoint what's going on here. So what we're going to be finding is on this graph template. We have engine RPM, we have map pressure, we have boost control duty cycle, and then we have gear. What we can see here is looking at our chart or looking at our graph, we can see the boost control duty was at 99% and then it drops to zero. Where it transitions from 99% to zero is when it hits approximately seven pounds of boost here. We can see it transitions over there right around that seven PSI mark, and that's coming from our quick spool right here. We shift this up a little bit. That's coming from our quick spool table right here. These values are going to be what holds it at this 99, 100% duty cycle value until it meets that boost threshold. Then it drops to whatever we've programmed here from, in this case, our fixed duty cycle here at 0%. So that's going to be something we have to always uh, keep in the back of our minds. Now, we want to go ahead and baseline the engine and see what the wastegate spring is going to be building for boost. We want to figure out where that's at. If we have too much wastegate spring, we're going to have to go in and uh, reduce the wastegate spring. If we have really bad boost creep, we're going to be able to tell it right off the bat. So we want to kind of get a feel for what the engine's going to do at the lowest boost possible so we can go in, tune our fuel and ignition timing, tune our cam angle, and then move into increasing the boost from that lowest point. Or if we're over boosting because we have too much wastegate spring, evaluate that, change the springs, make another pool, and figure out where your baseline's at. But we have to be at 0% duty cycle here, as we can see, uh, to be able to baseline it off the wastegate spring. Now, we can see here, this was engine RPM. I took this up to approximately 6,500. And that's going to be uh, my first pool. I'm just trying to figure out where everything's at for the fuel and ignition timing. Um, and then off again, the, the wastegate spring. In this case, this wastegate spring was approximately uh, 11, 12 PSI. We can see that's what it builds here. We can see that the gear, I did the pools in, was third gear. And again, we have 0%. 